Uh, there's an enduring legacy that continues to shape the growth and progress of this Twin Island nation. A tourism sector, the main driver of the country's economy, is entering a new era of positive growth. The new sectors are emerging to create employment and entrepreneurship opportunities. The rights and privileges of citizens are protected through ingeniously crafted codes of labor protection. A bitter period of sagging growth is disappearing as a result of the resilience of a proud people and steady leadership. Today's opportunities can be traced right back to the singular efforts of one man who rose from humble beginnings to pull his people from the harsh and cruel grips of colonialism. Born on 9th December 1909, V.C. Byrd followed a different path than most of the more prominent leaders in the Caribbean. Unlike Norman Nandy, for example, he had minimal formal education. Not professors, but teachers at the boys' school. Now the Tien Kernan School were responsible for his early education. He received a calling to serve a greater ideal while a member of the Salvation Army. From a group of men known today as the 39ers, V.C. Bird emerged as a dominant figure who would challenge the status quo at the time and pull Antiguans from subjugation through sacrifice, forceful lobby, skillful negotiation, and yes, charismatic leadership. At last, the people had a spokesman in the circles where the policies were formulated. I serve in the Executive Council, besides the Legislative Council. I serve on the Land Settlement Board. I serve on the Industrial Development Board. I was the, I was the only one who had the opportunity of serving upon these boards and on these councils. Five years after the formation of the Antigua Trades and Labor Union in 1939, Byrd had become its president in 1945. It became clear that he was destined to lead Antigua and Barbuda into a new era in a way that only this giant of a man could. He fought hard against the colonial masters to improve the working conditions and the quality of life of his fellow Antiguans. As I always try to let the people recognize that 1951 was the year when we began to make real headway in Antigua. I remember Mr. Moody Stewart saying to the government presence, Oh, they all said the trade union would be born in longer than nine months. And here it is going on and on and on. This thing has got to be stopped. I'm going to break the neck of it. He said, all I want is police protection. And in three months' time, I'll starve them into submission. Well, I came out. And I told the people what he had said. And so we started. Now, three months. First month, nobody turned out to work. Second month, nobody. The third month, no. At the end of the third month, when he realized that the warning given to him by the governor, take care you do not butt your head against a wall. That probably remembered. And so he came to me and he asked me to let us go around and hold some meetings among the people. And I agreed. We went first to Bethesda Corner by the Tumman Street. Thousands of people gathered there. And he wanted to uh, speak first, so I allowed him. And people said, no, no, Mr. Modestua, you're a wicked man. You say you're going to starve us into submission. Never again must anybody use that term to us. We are not going back to work with the balance of the year. And uh, he said, let us go to another place. So we left that crowd and we went to Betty Soap. And we met a crowd there that was just as large. And he wanted to speak first again, but he wasn't allowed. They began to question him. How is it he left people, children starving? And now coming to say, he's losing money and he's sure they're losing too. And they must go back and work. Well, they tell him the same thing. They told him the same thing. We're very sorry. 
We're going to see this thing through once and for all. We are not going back to work for the balance of the year. How did they do it? The people for the year went in the fields and they gathered that really, really bush. And daily they would cook that really, really bush. And Sundays they'll get some cockles from the beach. And that kept them. This part of the Caribbean, the OECS, was witnessing the crumbling of a cruel system of rule right here in Antigua and Barbuda. And Bird was at the forefront of the movement. And so, by 1967, Antigua and Barbuda was the first country in the sub-region to be accorded the status of statehood in association with Great Britain, placing it well on the way to full self-governance. In 1951, Antigua attained a universal adult suffrage, making it possible for all its people to vote in an election. The 18 LU, responsible for the conquest against colonialism, received an overwhelming vote under the Antigua Labour Party to the country's legislature. After the ministerial system was introduced in 1956, Byrd became the country's first chief minister in 1960 and later in 1967, its first premier as a result of statehood. But it was not enough. Antiguan Barbuda was still in the grips of its colonial masters, unable as it were to fully determine the course of its future development. There was a painful split in the labor movement in 1967. The story is told of a troubled bird who could only watch as riots threatened to erase some of the most significant gains he had achieved for his people. It gave rise to the Antigua Workers Union and the progressive labor movement that was responsible for pulling the seat of political power from on the bird. The rule of PLM did not last. Bird was able to convince the electorate in a very short space of time that his work in championing their cause was incomplete. To fully break the back of colonialism, Byrd led the movement towards independence, becoming Antiguan Barbados first Prime Minister in 1981. From a poor boy who did not receive the benefits of high education, to negotiating with powerful plantation owners, and leading his country to self-rule by ridding a small country of the influence of external rule, Papa Bird had not only achieved but he had inspired the people. Antiguan Barbuda emerged as a leader in the OECS with futuristic economic policies that saw the dramatic turn from sugar to an aggressive push towards investment. It was visionary, and a willing partner in his son, Sir Lester Bird, took up the mantle thereafter in the Ministry of Economic Development to build a new and modern Antigua. The legacy was established. In 1989, for his deep and inspired commitment to regionalism, he received the CARICOM's highest award, and joining him in that historic gathering in St. Lucia at the CARICOM Heads meeting was none other than Nelson Mandela himself. In 1994, for his selfless service and outstanding contribution to Antigua and Barbuda, he became the country's first national hero. Sevilla's mark on Antiguan Barbuda's history is indelible. Antiguan Barbuda became a mini metropolis of the sub region as Caribbean people flocked here to benefit from the major successes in business and careers, healthcare and education. But more than that, the way was cleared for other heroes to rise. And this was all that Sevilla Cornwall Bird wanted to lift up his people so that they too could overcome and be whoever they wanted to be. In various facets of life, our people excelled and heroes were created. But his legacy also contributed to a rich lineage of political thought, that if it is to be done, it will be done in a grand way to the lasting benefit of the people. It started back then and continues today on this day set aside to honor the late father of the nation, a grateful nation says, thank you, sir.